Hi, it's future me dropping in to say the piano piece that I used for this demonstration is Subtle Edge. I've got a couple of videos already about it. There's a performance video, which I'll link to above, and uh, also a little tutorial about what makes the, the piece tick. Um, all that's secondary to this video, of course. Well, I'm almost set up, so let's get going. Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I thought today we'd take a look at my signal chain that I use for recording my acoustic piano here in what is essentially my home, although it's where I teach and record and, and uh, do all, most of my musical work. Doing audio work in a home, in a somewhat untreated room with outside noise, random um, echoes, and just all the problems that are inherent in a non-managed space. It can be a challenge and I'd just like to show you how I have things set up. Well, now let's take a look at uh, first what I use for my mic signal chain, my mics and mic placement. Well, I, I hope you can hear me. Um, and you can see that my grand piano, which is a seven foot Korean grand, is set up with the lid fully open. I try to set up my microphones over the bridge of the piano, and that's what I've done with the album that I'm working on now. When you set up the mics over the bridge, oh, goodbye little bug, you're getting the, the best sound that the piano has to offer. And I've tried lots of different mic setups. These mics are 10 inches above the bridge over the bass, where the lowest bass strings and the mid-range bass strings cross. And right here, about halfway um, uh, into the treble section, I'm going left, right, and hard panning them. Now, these microphones, which are Warm Audio U87 clones, have Omni, Cardioid, and Figure 8 patterns. And I've tried them all. You can try a Figure 8 pattern if you're, if you're using a Bloom Line Array, or if you're using Midside, and they're terrific. But these are set up cardioid, and they're pointed straight down. I've actually, I've actually marked the location that I used for my uh, piano album on the bridge so that the mics are always over it so I have a consistent level. Now, um, I'm going to cut away to um, this little wide-angle shot that I have of my preamp, bus compressor, and the setup. So what I'm using is the WA-273 two-channel British microphone preamp. And it's got phantom power, of course, and uh, roll-off and outputs. And that's going to a lightly tapped two-channel bus compressor. I'm using a very modest compression setting over here. The threshold's pretty high. Uh, modest attack, modest release, and a low ratio. I love the <clears throat> excuse me. I love the transformers uh, on this bus compressor, and I'm just recording up here to uh, two channels left and right uh, in Logic. Now I have a very modest audio interface here, the Focusrite uh, two channel, and I get to use, of course, the line inputs. The the, the less I use the preamps on this little red box the better. <laughs> I'm going to get a nice clean signal. stereo separated from that.
Well, <clears throat> when I'm done recording, um, I roll over and stop the deck, and um, I fly those audio files to my desk. And the desk is where I do most of the post-production work, editing, effects. So let's go over there. Well, let's take a look at what it looks like in the, in the DAW. Okay. So here we are in, in Logic, and I've, I've already uh, created a project that has uh, two separate mono tracks panned, not completely hard, left and right. Um, what I've discovered in, in, uh, by trial and error is that uh, a kind of a 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock mix sounds pretty good. Well, this is what it sounds like completely raw with no EQ compression or effects. It, it's not an unpleasant sound at all. Those are decent microphones and you know I'm I'm you know very happy with the basic sound I'm getting. But but here's what I like to do. I bust each of these channels um, to a piano subgroup, and now everything that I do is going to be in my piano sub. And the very first thing that one would ordinarily do to something like this is to take a look at the EQ. So let's just open up Logic's EQ and take a look at things. This, this is about what we'd expect, so I'm just going to go ahead and roll off everything below 40. I know I don't need it. The music I play is most of the time fairly serene, so there aren't big dynamic peaks. But let's open a compressor. That's sort of my, my next thing. And there are so many good possibilities. Um, but just for the sake of argument, I'm going to suggest that we stick with the dynamics processors that are built right into <laughs> I'm talking in, the, in here uh, let, let's try a compressor that's just like you know built in to logic so I want a modest threshold honestly I don't want to grab much more than that maybe a little bit I like the low ratio No makeup gain for me. I'm going to take auto gain off. And uh, for, for some piano sounds, you'll want a faster attack. Some you'll want a slower one. This is pretty good. These are these standard ones are good. Um, I like a slightly softer knee. No distortion. And since we're catching it a tiny bit, I'm just going to output a bit more. I think actually that's a little bit too much compression. Just listening to it. Here, hitting it really hard. Hitting it not so hard. Ah, it's a more open sound, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'm back. So I've invested in um, third party plugins, as, as I'm sure many people uh, have. And one of the ones that I'm really enjoying using is Soothe. Soothe is an essentially an adaptive equalizer. By setting a range, top and bottom, and a few focal points that you'd like the, the, the EQ to focus on, you can cut out resonant pe peaks. I'm going to set the oversampling and quality to 2x because I can easily hand that with the, handle that with this machine. And then uh, maybe increase the sharpness. And the net result is a generally smoother tone. I'm liking this. Now, my next step is uh, to build a couple of sends, maybe some 
reverb, certainly some reverb, maybe some delay, we'll see. But I'm going to start with um, reverb. So bus 2, this is the next bus available. And since it's going to be reverb, I'm going to name it so that I don't lose track. And the first thing I'm going to and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just set the range that I want the reverb to catch. It's not unusual to roll off everything below 400 or so. I don't think it's a bad idea in this case. And then from there, send to the reverb. Well, I have a few go-to reverbs because I'm very into the dreamy sound. Um, one of my favorite ones is Valhalla's Shimmer, or the Free Space Modulator. Another one is Eventide's Shimmer Verb, which I'm going to choose here. Shimmer Verb will allow you to uh, set um, a pitch echo. So, it's just a beautiful effect, uh, with slight chorusing effects. There we go. You can see it's, it's sort of chorusing pitch down by 24, up by 23. Um, I think we probably change the timing to manual, because... That sort of chorusy, dreamy sound. Now I could easily do something like this. Um, decide that I'm going to make this pre-fader, and now we'll hear only the reverb. It's a beautiful sound by itself, and then maybe sneak in less feedback. Smaller size, fewer mid, fewer lows. Nice. Okay, now let's sneak the piano sound back in. Here it comes. And this is getting very close to my my piano sound of, of choice. Um, I'll often add some final compression. Uh, I use uh, Wave C4, and it's it's a multiband compressor. But there is a multiband compressor built into as well and I don't I want to take the the gate all the way down so it'll have a, I'll have a natural decay well this is getting pretty close to my sound and I I I might, I might spend a, a lot of time tweaking it. Um, it right now I'm listening uh, just for the sake of a uh, cleaner sound as I narrate what I'm doing on my um, Avantone mix cubes, which are very mid-rangey. And that's, they're designed that way. It's a single small three inch speaker, well powered. And I have them in stereo. A lot of people just use a single one to try to duplicate the effect of listening on, say, a phone or something like that. I also use Atom A7Xs uh, with a subwoofer for my bigger productions. Critical listening is important. Um, my final mixes very often will be mastered. And then I check everything, um, both on the phone, on different playback devices, and the car, of course, you know, the whole nine yards. There are lots of ways to record a piano. Um, I'm using large diaphragm condenser mics here. 
I'm using them in cardioid and I'm miking over the bridge, not over the hammers. The sound doesn't come from the strings on a piano, it comes from the soundboard. And the bridge, just like the bridge of a guitar, is where all the business gets done. Um, well, I hope this has been useful. Uh, any questions you might have about other kinds of piano miking applications, don't hesitate to ask, because I might use a very different approach for, say, rock and roll or a jazz group set up uh, in that room back there where I have a drum as well. A whole different kettle of fish when it's just, just a single piano, a single expansive sound. I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe, leave a comment. I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.